welcome back. So I am here with another tutorial video for you utilizing a spin perk, which is spend 45, get 15,000 in points. This is a digital perk, not a paper perk. So I received this in the app on one of my cards and there's no rhyme or reason as to why some accounts get them. Some do not, why we get different amounts, etc. It is just a Walgreens mystery. Nonetheless, this particular account is not as active and I had this spin perk in it. So I decided to go ahead and utilize it, boosting up my points on this particular account. So again, it is a digital spin perk. Spin $45, get 15,000 back in points. You must spend 45 before tax before manufacturing coupons, but after any Walgreens savings, such as the coupons that come in the Walgreens IVC booklet, any percentage off coupons, any threshold coupons off a certain amount, for instance, $9 off a $30 purchase or $2 off a $15 purchase, before any promotional gift cards that you may have received, Walgreens consider that their money they're giving you, even though you earn the gift card by completing a promotion and you most likely spent your cash to do so, Walgreens still view it as their money. So again, you must spend 45 before tax, before manufacturing coupons, which includes registered rewards because they are considered a manufacturer coupon, but after all additional Walgreens coupons and savings, IVC coupons, percentage off coupons, threshold coupons, and then any gift cards that are from a promotional thing from Walgreens. So there you have it there. Now, what I did is I specifically wanted to utilize this spin booster with deals that were going to give me back points and or register rewards. In my opinion, that is the best way to use a spin booster or even a threshold coupon. You want to be able to boost your points and or register rewards, um, earning more store money and then use that store money to purchase other items that you may be in need of or hold it for another week of deals, etc. So my goal is always with those spin perks to do deals that will be giving me money back as well. Now in this current week that I did this deal, we actually have a PNG deal going on that is also on a spin promotion. I decided not to do that deal, although the coupons from that those products that are in that deal would have been perfect to pair up with this spin 45, get 15. Two reasons why I did not want to do it, actually three reasons. First, I didn't need any of the products that were included in the PNG. Secondly, um, what was my second reason? I think it was probably it. Two reasons. I didn't need it. And then the second reason was, oh, no, I didn't need it was the first reason. And then the second reason was I did not want to do a spin deal, spend X on select product to get X back in points combined with the spin booster. Hear me out. My theory is it will work with no issues. I don't believe that we have to meet the spin total on the PNG deal, for example. Just example sake, that deal in this current week that I'm speaking of is spin 20, get 5. My spin booster is spin 45, get 15. I do not believe that we need to spin 20 plus 45, total of $65. I do not believe we need to spend that in order to use both boosters, well, not both boosters, in order to use the booster and do the spin deal. Okay, I'm talking a lot, let me back up. Three reasons why I decided not to do the PNG deal that's going on in this current week, even though that deal had some high value coupons that would count towards our threshold amount. First reason being, I didn't care, I didn't need the product, I, the, the shampoo and all that stuff I didn't need. Second reason being, I wanted to keep it separate. I did not want to do a spin deal on select products, getting points back, and then a spin deal with my booster. I don't believe that I need to spend 20 and 65. So the next time I get a booster like so, I will pair it up with another spin deal and see about rolling points and see how that works out and then come back and do a tutorial video on that. Third reason is because I wanted to make sure I had a balance left over 
that I can actually roll points in to show you guys that it actually works. Spinning points to earn points. A lot of words. Clarify one more time. The deals I decided to do are actually products that I utilize and need it. Well, I won't say need it, but I utilize. Um, I did not want to do the spin deal and the spin perk together because I want to do that in a different scenario later on when we have the opportunity because the coupons and the deals are there to do so and then show you guys how that works. So for this example, we are only focused on spending $45 for the spin perk of spend 45, get 15. Um, I hope I didn't confuse anybody. It's a lot of words. So we're just gonna break it down from there. I'll leave notes in the comments for you. Um, but again, always look to do those boosters with deals that are gonna give you back points and or register rewards. Even if you're not exactly in need of those particular items or you don't use them, you can donate those items. If you do any reselling, you can resell those items. You're gonna gain the store money back that you can then use to purchase the items you're actually in need of. I hope all that rambling made sense. So let me shut up and let's get into the deal. All right, so again, we are utilizing a digital spin perk for spend $45, get 15,000 points. You must spend 45 before tax and before manufacture coupons, but after the Walgreens coupons and or additional savings. Also, this is a generalized coupon, so you don't have to spend 45 on select product. You can spend 45 on whatever you want. You want to get paper goods, personal care items, um, makeup items, some groceries. Does not matter for this particular perk. It is a general perk that you can spend 45 on anything in the store, unless otherwise noted. I believe lottery and tobacco is not included but you spend 45 on any item in store, you will receive 15,000 in points. Unlike the beauty event flyers that we get sometimes that is spend 25 on beauty related products, you must spend 25 on beauty. You could not pick up $20 in beauty, um, beauty, <laughs> $20 in beauty and then $5 in paper products you would have to spend 25 on beauty products as that is what that particular spin perk is stating. So again, this particular spin perk that we're using is just spend 45 on general items, get 15,000 in points. Okay, so for this haul, I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of detail on each one of these items and the separate deals as these deals have been discussed throughout this current week that we're in. So if you are wanting to go out and do these deals before the sales week end, then definitely refer back to some of the previous haul videos for this particular week. Okay, so what I did is I picked up four of the Scott toilet paper, regular price $5, on sale, buy one, get one 50% off. I utilized insert coupons for 50 cent off of one. I picked up the famous little hairsprays, the Tresemme, all month long, they have been buy one, get one 50% off. Buy four, get 5,000 points. So I picked up eight total. On the speed stick, they are buy one, get one 50% off. And then buy two, get 3,000 points. And that is in this particular week I'm doing this um, tutorial video. Now, just to note, with buy deals, you can buy in multiple in a single transaction and you will get the points back for each qualifying buy deal you do. Example, I picked up eight Tresemme. They are buy four, get 5,000 points. Therefore, I got back 10,000 points for buying eight in a single transaction. Okay, the Snuggle is buy one, get one free. The Nice Disaffecting Wipes, buy one, get one free. And the razor is $7.99. Buy one, get a $3 register reward. So again, guys, remember that when it comes to Walgreens currency, they consider actual currency, currency, your bank card, your debit card, manufacture coupons, whether from the newspaper, coupons found on a product such as this, say, 50 cent now, that is considered a Pilly coupon, or register rewards and then manufacture coupons that is in our um, app 
All of that is considered currency as far as Walgreens system is concerned. And it all will count towards our spend threshold. All right, so let's build up our transaction. All right, so again, we must spend $45. Our subtotal for everything on the table is $54.35. So that definitely meets the spend threshold amount. Now our threshold amount minus the amount we have in manufacturer coupons for the products that we're picking up. I had a $4 for the razor, a $2 off two for the snuggle, and then 50 cent on each one of the toilet papers. That's a total of $8 in manufacturer coupon savings. So that leaves us at $46.35 total due to the cashier. However, we don't want to pay this amount out of pocket, of course. We want to go ahead and utilize any of the coupons that we may have to lower our out of pocket. In this case, we are using manufacturer coupons in the form of a register reward. Remember, register rewards are considered manufacturer coupons. All right, let's keep building. So $54.35 minus our $8 in manufacturer coupons minus four $10 register rewards. Now, one thing to note, this particular week that I'm doing this deal, we just so happen to have deals giving us back such a high value register reward in the amount of $10. This here is foundational information. So if you don't have $10 register rewards, but let's say you have an $8, $6, $5, $3, etc. Whatever register rewards you have and manufacturer coupons you have for the products that you are purchasing, you want to apply all of that towards your spend threshold amount. Please don't get caught up on the fact that in this particular week that you may be watching this video down the road, that you don't have a $10 register reward. You only have $8 register rewards, for example. Use what you have in the current week. Again, this is foundational information on how a spend deal works. Okay, so I have a total of $48 that has been spent in the form of coupons towards my spend threshold of $45. That leaves the total at $6.35. Since I have met the spend threshold, again, of $45 in the form of manufacturer coupons and register rewards, the remaining balance, I can go ahead and use points to pay. So our remaining balance is $6.35. Following the point system that Walgreens have, the most that we can redeem is 5,000 points, leaving the total at $1.35 plus tax out of pocket. Okay. So again, I did a spend 45, get 15,000 back. I What I did was stack deals that were going to give me points and or register rewards back as well to increase the amount of store money I was going to receive back on this transaction. So the booster gave me 15, the Tresemme gave me 10, the speed stick gave me six, and then I got a $3 register reward from the Razor for a total of 35, no, a total of $34 back in store money. And let me show you here, $3 register reward for the Razor. Just to give you an example, these are $10 register rewards, just in case you're new and not sure how they look. These are, these are not the ones I use, obviously, in the transaction. These are others that I have earned throughout this particular week. But 10, 20, 30, 40, that is $40 right there. So I use $40 in register rewards along with the $8 I had in manufacturer coupons. Okay, so let's stop here and let's go over our receipt. And then we'll come back to some more information. Okay, so... The nice disinfected wipes were $3.49, buy one, get one free. Now with Walgreens system, anytime something is buy something, get something free, the free item will automatically ring up for zero. So you do not want to count the cost of that item into your threshold um, or into your, well, yeah, into the amount that you need to spend. Let me rephrase that. Anytime there's a buy one, get one free item, free items always ring up at zero. So you don't want to add in the total for the free item in order to reach your required spend amount because it will automatically rank up at zero. So you will actually be short. I hope that made sense. So snuggle, buy one, get one free. 
There's my Speed Stick deodorant, my Scott toilet paper, Tresemme, so on and so forth. Now, one thing that's odd with this particular, um, I got my razor, with this particular receipt, is that you know how on most receipts, whenever you use a point booster of any kind, it will say point booster of, you know, 45 clip. It's nowhere on this receipt, so I don't know if the system was about to go down or if it was just the way the system was at this particular store. I'm not quite sure. Or if it's a matter of the spin booster is still on my app and still available to be used. So I'm not quite sure. I'll leave a note in the comment section on that um, when I check the app in the morning to see whether or not that booster shows that it has been redeemed or if it shows that it's still available to be used. So... That would be interesting to find out. All right, so all of my coupons scanned with no problem. You see all four of the $10 register rewards, $6.35. My tax was $6.44. With tax was $6.44. 5,000 in points I redeemed. And then let's look down here. I got back a total of 31,000 in points, which is correct. And then when you factor in the $3 register reward, that's a total of $34 back in store money. And you see where it says I redeemed 5,000 points. So I started off with 15,390 and then my everyday points and then my bonus points, what I redeemed and my closing balance is 41,880. Okay, let me just go back over the receipt one more time so you guys can see. And don't forget, anytime something is buy one, get one free, it will automatically ring up at zero. So you don't want to factor that amount in towards your total transaction for your transaction total. Hope that made sense. All of the coupons. Yada, yada, yada. So again, guys, it works. Um, using points to pay, it does take quite a few brain cells, but once you get the gist of it, you're good to go. Now, let me show you guys this. Okay. I do my math the long way, if you will, versus the short way, if you will. Subtotal is $54.35 minus all of my register rewards. So let's just say we had $45 in register rewards. So we had four $10 rewards and we had one $5. So that's $45, right? Minus our subtotal, that would leave us at $9.35 plus tax. For me, my tax is 8.25%. That's about 78 cents added to the transaction total. So I'm at $10.13. If I use 10,000 points, great. I will pay 13 cents cash out of pocket for everything. However, using those 10,000 points, I will not get points back for that spin booster because the 10,000 points will put me under the required threshold amount, which is $45. And here we go here. 54.35 minus 10,000 points leaves me at 44.35. So that leaves me short by 65 cents for the required threshold of $45. So that is why I do my math the long way, if you will. I want to calculate, and let me go back to the beginning with my little flash cards here. I have all the items that I want to purchase. So my total is $54.35 for all of the items I'm going to be purchasing. Then at that point, I want to see what I have in manufactured coupons for those items and deduct that. And then see what my remaining balance is. Now at this point, I'm like, okay, what other store money do I have and I can use? I know I can't use 40,000 uh, 40, points. If I did, I wouldn't get points back. Plus, you can't redeem in increments of 40. Anyways, I know I can't use points on $46.35 because then I definitely won't get back my points for the spin perk. So then I'm like, okay, I have registered rewards. How many do I need to add in to cover my costs to get me the least amount of cash out of pocket. So I roll in 48 in register, well, 40 in register rewards and then eight in manufactured coupons for a total of $48 in coupons rolled in. And then that brings me all the way down to 635, 5,000 points, dollar and 35 cent cash out of pocket plus the tax. So 
that is pretty much that. Now let me go over filler items. We sometimes get confused over whether or not we need a filler item. With Register Rewards, because they are considered manufactured coupons, they need a product to attach to. I had a total of 10 coupons and a total of 21 items. I had well over the required items for all of my coupons. Hope that made sense. Register Rewards or consider manufacturer coupons and they need something to attach to. I had a total of 10 manufacturer coupons including the register rewards but a total of 21 items. So I had well over enough items for my register rewards to attach to. Also one thing to note, I am a paper girl. I will use paper coupons over digital coupons any day of the week. Yes, I do use digital coupons when need be, but when it comes to mixing digital coupons and register rewards, they do not always mix well. The long short of it is, and I will do a separate video explaining this, but the long short of it is, the way Walgreens system is, they process paper coupons first. So once you scan all of your products in, you scan your manufacturer coupons. If you're gonna use register rewards, you scan those. Those register rewards have to go attached to something. So they will attach to any item. If they attach to something that you had a digital coupon for, that you were hope well, that not hoping, well, yeah, hoping, but that you were anticipating the digital coupon to come off for, that digital coupon will not come off because the register reward took that product. I hope that made sense. And again, I'll come back with a separate video to break all that down. But for now, guys, this is it. If you have questions about anything, definitely leave it in the comments for me. I hope the way that I'm explaining things is crystal clear. You guys are um, following along with me. Again, I want us all to master Walgreens, period. Like, we need to be in there slaying these deals every day. Like, not every day, but you know what I mean, like every day. <laughs> Anyways, it's getting late. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already. And until next time, guys, happy coupon.